Laylatul Qadri Khairun Min Alf Shah Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullah My brothers and sisters, the gates of mercy Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in This month there are special gates that we need to know about They are the gates of paradise There are so many gates Allah Almighty makes mention of but eight gates of paradise. One of them is a specialized gate known as Ar-Rayyan. Ar-Rayyan is a gate through which those who fast dedicatedly shall enter through by the will of Allah. Because Allah says, مَنْ سَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever fasts correctly in the month of Ramadan with full conviction in Allah, hoping for a reward from Allah, all their previous sins will be forgiven. They will be wiped out. So Allah Almighty has given us and indeed he has favored us by giving us a special door through which those who took their fasting seriously will enter, those who fasted. And remember something, the fasting is not just in this wonderful, beautiful month. Yes, this is compulsory. But beyond that, there are other fasts like the Monday and the Thursday, like the 13th, 14th and 15th of every lunar month. Those are voluntary sunnah fasts that will bring about great reward and great benefit. But at the same time, this month of Ramadan is something unique. We must develop something known as taqwa. The reason why we have to continuously speak about the issue of taqwa is because Allah says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ O you who believe, fasting has been written for you, meaning prescribed upon you, it's written for you, it's compulsory upon you, just like it was for those before you, even though those before us had fasting, but of a slightly different nature. With ours, the rules and regulations from dawn to dusk, this is what you do, this is what you don't do, 30 days, and this is what the period will be, and so on, the daily period and the whole month. All that is a little bit different, but with the previous nations, Allah says, we prescribed it upon those before you in order that you achieve taqwa. Like I've said in yesterday's episode, Taqwa is to create a barrier between you and something. Here, to create a barrier between you and that which is displeasing to you, that which is unfortunate, that which is the wrath of Allah, the punishment of Allah, the anger of Allah. Like we say, we love Allah so much that we do not want to anger Him. We don't want to say or do anything that may spoil this wonderful relationship with Allah. So Allah says, you want to develop this relationship? Taqwa is what you need. So taqwa is to develop the correct relationship with Allah. That's why I always say, uh, whenever a person translates the term, ittaqullah, it's oh you who believe, develop the correct relationship with Allah. And the details are, as I just explained. So this taqwa is something I need to build. I need to develop. How do I do that? By becoming conscious of who I am. I came from somewhere. When I came onto the earth, I came with very little. Nothing, in fact. The little means my body given by Allah, loaned. The, body, the organs that I have, everything started functioning properly one time. And that was the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Besides that, material items, I had nothing. My parents came in and helped me. They gave me, like I said, as they indoctrinated us, we learned whatever they taught us, we learned. We believed what was right based on what we saw and what we learned as time passes. And this is why people across the globe are scrambling to educate the little kids according to their system. What's the reason? Quite simple. When your computer requires applications and a working system, those who have put that in would reap the greatest benefit from that particular computer. When it comes to humankind, those who got to the brains of the children first and in the early years nurtured them, the children begin to believe that that is the way. They will laugh at, scoff at, disrespect any other way or any other method because they don't know it. They've never been accustomed to it. They haven't mixed. They haven't understood. And that's why not everything you learn is correct. 
You have to keep going back to revelation and asking yourself, does this conform with what Allah said? No, it doesn't. Throw it out. No matter who taught it to me and what happened. Is this okay? Is this correct? Is this what the Almighty wants from me? Is this the level of morality, the level of my values? Is this what it should be? If not, well, you need to adjust. So Allah gives you a month to develop this taqwa, this consciousness. Who am I? Why did Allah reveal the book? Why did he send so many messengers? Why did he make me say, peace be upon him or them? Every time I said the name of a messenger, because he wants me to value them, he sent to us the best of the best. All these messengers that came to us from the time of Adam, all the way down to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, including Jesus and Moses, may peace be upon them. Aaron, David and Solomon, may peace be upon them. Abraham and Isaac and Ishmael, may peace be upon them. Those are the English names, but the Arabic names are also correct. If we have to look at any one of them, including the Prophet Lot, for example, and uh, Saleh and the others, Allah Almighty, has asked us through the blessed lips of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, to say, peace be upon them, because they did a good job. What did they come to do? They came to teach us, to tell us, no matter how you've grown up, you need to constantly look at what you were taught when you were little. When you were little, if you were taught things that are not good, people begin to swear. And the children, their parents say, where did you learn this from? Well, I learned it at school, or I learned it here or there. Forget about the swear words. Sometimes those might be lighter than some of the habits and the beliefs that these kids develop over time. That's why there is a, there is a, a battle to get to the brain of the child earlier. And they'll tell you, we need to do this and you need to teach this and you must teach this and that. Alhamdulillah. We pray that what they're being taught is good and it will result in their development of the relationship with their maker primarily and then the fulfillment of the rights of everyone around them in the most beautiful way. So Allah gives us a month, this month of beauty. In the midst of all the difficulty and hardship, here is a breath of fresh air. I realized, you know what? Allah has told me, don't eat. Go hungry, subhanAllah, for a while. Discipline yourself. Increase your acts of worship in the process. Read a lot of Quran. Fulfill much more of your prayer. And we will grant you great reward. Allah says, breath of fresh air. We give you a spirituality. Beautiful days that are filled with such amazing ambience that it's not felt in any other month outside of this particular month of Ramadan. We will give you some amazing opportunity to soften your heart. If you don't soften it during this month, when would you like to soften it? If you don't repent in the month of repentance, when are you going to repent? If you don't turn to Allah during the month of turning to Allah, when are you going to do that? If you're not going to quit your ways and habits that have been bogging you down the wrong ways and habits, when are you going to do that? All of this is part of the plan of Allah. He's given you an opportunity. He knows that you need opportunities. Look, every year Ramadan comes back. When Ramadan comes back, many of us find that we're starting again. And, you know, we were back where we were. But that shouldn't be the case. We should be, we should have progressed. And we find ourselves a notch higher, a step higher than what we were the previous year. In the sense that now I want to develop on that as well. And we're getting older by the day. We're not getting younger. We've seen people die around us. We've seen people lose their lives. We've seen things happening that have really shaken us to the core. Allah says, that was just a tapping. We're just reminding you, you're also going to come back to us. What are you going to do about it? So let's turn to Allah Almighty in the most amazing way. Developing the taqwa, as we said, and understanding the gates of paradise. Now, sometimes we might be weak and we might not have developed a certain aspect of development in a way that we should have. So Allah says, I will give you different opportunities to enter paradise. You know, you may enter paradise through your character and conduct. You may enter paradise through your acts of direct worship like prayer. You may enter paradise through your recitation of the Quran, through your abstention from that which is prohibited. You may enter paradise through that. You may enter paradise through a, a deed, a singular deed that you did for the sake of the Almighty that was so powerful on the scales and heavy, weighty on the scales of good deeds 
that Allah says for you is paradise. So many ways of earning paradise. Don't look at a person and think for a moment because they're not doing exactly what you are doing, that they're actually going to hell because they could be involved in other acts of worship or something unique that will take them to paradise maybe before you and before myself. So Allah Almighty grant us a good understanding. My brothers and sisters, make the most of this wonderful month of Ramadan. We need to change our habits that are negative. You need to cut out certain things you are doing that you know are wrong for the sake of Allah. Let's start off with simple habits that we know we need to give up. I tell you, people have looked at a random habit I'm going to mention. People have looked at smoking cigarettes and said, you know what? That's an easy thing. It's fine. You know, I don't think Allah will punish me for that. Forget about that. Is it a good habit? No, it's not. Cut it. Quit it for the sake of Allah. You can do it. This is the month of Ramadan. Are you not going to please Allah Almighty? You were on earth for how long? Similarly, people have now taken that to another level of smoking weed and trying to justify it. Smoking other things and, and, and sniffing things and doing sorts of, all sorts of things and taking different types of uh, things that they're not supposed to that intoxicate them when all intoxicants are prohibited in Islam. So Allah Almighty wants us to be hard on ourselves in order to come out of the month disciplined, beautiful. And trust me, you'll never lose if you were to follow the beautiful path of discipline. For indeed, Allah will grant you success in this world and the next. Imagine our children and the others around us look at us. They are supposed to see a beautiful example so that we can open the right gates of paradise. We can close up all the gates of hellfire and we can enter Jannah in the most beautiful way. We can rekindle this lovely relationship with Allah so that we are so happy the day we meet with Allah and He would be happy too. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahr 